we do meet, um, the Inspire Spiritual Community does meet on the second and fourth Sunday of every week. This week, we have the privilege of the wonderful Reverend Alfreda Lenoir, who will do our main teaching. And then we have Ellie Wallace doing our God Shot today. So we're in for a treat. Um, on the fourth Sunday of each month, Reverend Jesse speaks. Reverend Jesse Brun Haran, our uh, one of our founding ministers. Um, so always a good treat uh, when we're here at Inspire. So again, we want to welcome anybody who's joining us for the first time. Um, again, we've got we've got Poland, Montrose, we've got uh, Long Beach, we've got South Africa. Um, welcome everybody. So glad you're here. So we're going to do a little greeting and blessing for the people who haven't been here before. And so I invite you to take a look at your screen, look at all these beautiful faces. And you know, if you need a little pick up, pick me up, I give you permission to cheat and you can receive this blessing even if it's not your first time, okay? But if you're in, a, in, in, in the, in the uh, if you're feeling like giving right now, I invite you to rub your hands together. If you feel like receiving, then just open your, open your heart. Ah, welcome to Inspire. We thank you for joining us. We recognize that you are the image and the likeness of God that you're created from the substance of God. We thank you for joining, you, joining us. We love you and we welcome you home to inspire. Thank you. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, oh, so beautiful, so beautiful, so many beautiful faces. And so now we'll just take a couple of moments and become present. We'll take a couple of moments to just let go of everything that came before this moment and so I invite you to allow your eyes to close. And when you allow your eyes to close, let's let that be a reminder to open our hearts. So we close our eyes so that we're not distracted. And we open our hearts. And in fact, we choose to place our attention on our heart. And as your attention's on your heart, Inhale deeply as if you can breathe directly into your heart. Just try feeling that. Inhale deeply the love of God. And exhale completely into gratitude for this moment. So we're inhaling love. We're exhaling gratitude. We're just going to begin with a few precious moments of stillness, just following the breath. And if thoughts enter your awareness, just watch them gently float away. There's nothing to do right now except breathing. What are we doing? We're just taking a couple of moments and just meditating. Just enjoying a couple of moments of stillness. Inhaling deeply in the love of God, exhaling completely. Hmm. Inhaling the love of God and exhaling into gratitude. And ever so gently, <clears throat> I invite you to allow your attention to return back to your body, maybe wiggling your fingers and toes, taking yet another deep breath, inhaling love. And I'm thankful to take this moment to speak a word of blessing for today's gathering. 
Father, Mother, God, infinite intelligence, how thankful I am for this gathering, for the unique and specific way that God has shown up as each of us and as all of us. I know that God is present here, right here and right now, as the order, the grace, and harmony of this service. And what I know is that God shows up as pure, unconditional love in a big, bold, magnificent way. And so we each show up as the light of God, so profound, so bright, that the world is made a better place because we came together we kept our divine appointment and we showed up so that we can remember the truth of ourselves, so that we can remember the truth of each other, and so that we can continue lifting the vibration of the planet simply by being here. I know that this entire service is blessed. I know that Reverend Frida's message gives us insight, revelation, healing, and transformation. I'm thankful that Ellie's God shot just launches us to our greatest yet to be. This is a good service, a good service, not only for us, but for the entire planet. The world is made a better place because we said yes to showing up at Inspire. And so as we say yes to Inspire, God says yes to us and all is exceedingly well. I do release this prayer. I let go. I let God. It is done. And so it is. Amen. All right. Well, welcome once again, everybody. So glad that you've decided to join us on this Sunday. What a great way to start our week. And so it is my pleasure to introduce to you Reverend Tom Hennessy, who will anchor us in our mission statement. Reverend Tom. Tom, I can't hear you. Don't forget to unmute. Let's do that again. Welcome, everybody. The mission statement here on the screen. Inspire is a spiritual community of like-minded souls committed to walking our talk in joyous fellowship by demonstrating the power of love, compassion, and non-judgment every day in every way. Recognizing the divinity of all life, we stand united by actively liberating humanity, by healing judgment, fear, and shame from within ourselves. Our, our intention to create world peace, peace by peace, Whoa and now it is my good pleasure to introduce to you our own l Wallace. hi everybody it's so nice to see these new beautiful faces um i was asked today to um speak on the gift of forgiveness which is a um, something i've struggled with most of my life up until very recently so it was a divine plan for me to teach what I've learned on my journey about forgiveness. So sometimes forgiveness happens instantaneously with minor transgressions, right? So somebody snaps at you, you're having a bad day, um, you know, they apologize and it's forgotten. Why? Why is that small transgression so easy to forgive? Compassion. We've all been there. We've lost patience with someone. We've, you know, how many people haven't done that? And um, so you understand, it's like a camaraderie. It's like, I get it. I've been there. Don't worry about it. It's forgotten. But what if the transgression is heinous, like a murder or adultery, right? The ultimate betrayal. In that case, forgiveness becomes an internal process, a process of aligning spirit with love. So for example, let's say somebody cheated on you. You were together for 20 years, built this beautiful family together, only to find out your spouse has been lying, scheming, betraying your mind, your body, your spirit. How can I ever forgive that? Well, there's two paths you can take. We can allow the ego to take over, which is very normal. We're human to feel angry, hurt, self-loathing, revenge, swearing, I'm never going to forgive this, never going to forgive you. I'll show you, which ultimately just ends 
in you suffering even more. As the Course in Miracles states, the warden can't leave the prison any more than the prisoner can. Let me just say that again. The warden can't leave the prison any more than the prisoner can. So what's our other option? We allow love to take over. So remember back in the first scenario, how easy it was to find the compassion, you know, someone having a bad day, you take that same, and even if you can't relate to that person's actions, you try to find the compassion, the mercy, all of what God gives us so freely every day for our transgressions. Now, I'm not saying, you don't condone the behavior, but you're aware that that person's actions was based out of their own fears. It is not a reflection on you. Maybe the person who cheated wasn't able to effectively communicate their feelings. Maybe they felt inadequate in the relationship, so needed to fill their ego with outside pleasures. Maybe they didn't feel worthy of love or uh, that person comes from a lineage of broken family where monogamy just wasn't taught to them. See the wounded child in the other person, the innocence in them. And this is where the gift comes. This is where a miracle happens. Knowing that everything the universe brings you, it's not happening to you. It's happening for you. And in that mindset, in that thinking, ask yourself when you've been hurt, ask yourself when you're in that place, well, what can I learn from this? Do I have a responsibility in what transpired? Uh, what was this person teaching me about myself? Why am I so hurt? What's triggering me? Is this a repeated cycle in my life? Now, it doesn't make you less spiritual, needing time to fully cleanse from the transgression and see that the person is a divine expression of God's love, just as you are. And let me just say that one more time. It does not make you less spiritual because you need more time to go through that process. That's Marian Williamson so eloquently sums up the gift of forgiveness. These were her words. Only when we release someone from our condemnation of what they did, do we free ourselves of the effects of what they did. By giving the gift of forgiveness, we receive the gift of forgiveness. So what's the most important that I recently learned and my takeaway that to impart in you? Forgiving someone, it is not an invitation to have that person back in your life. You're simply releasing that person with love and in return, loving yourself. Now that, that is the gift in forgiveness. And with that, please let me introduce you to the dynamic, the beautiful, the amazing Reverend Alfreda. Oh, I'm Nick. Can you hear me now? Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Wallace. That was amazing and beautiful, thank you. I am so honored and excited to be here um, talking about the gift of forgiveness because on a personal level, it is definitely something that I, even though I'm spiritual, I sometimes struggle with. And when I find myself in that struggle, I take the time to really begin to analyze and see what is it about me holding on to something that no longer serves me. Something that she says that is so true. There's a quote that says, to forgive is to set the prisoner free and to discover that the prisoner is you. Can I say that? to set the prisoner free and to discover that the prisoner is you. Not to forgive holds you in a state of being held hostage to the past. Now, 
in order to have your life back, you, you must forgive. If you want to have joy and peace and love in your life, forgiveness is the gift that you must give to yourself. You know, if you notice, I always, I always try to share that everything that you do is an inside job. In order for me to be able to forgive you, I must first start with forgiving myself. You know, I struggle with my weight. And so I am constantly in the state of forgiving because, you know, I always think about, you know, why can't I do this? Why is this so difficult? Why am I making this, you know, making choices in my life? I constantly have to recognize and forgive myself and let go of what I should. See, feel, forgiveness allows you not to go to what I should do, what I should have did, because that makes cause judgment in your life. Now, listen to this. Traditional forgiveness, which judges everything as either good, bad, or wrong. Radical forgiveness, it takes a view of no right or wrong. It takes a view of what is, it, it, it is, and that people are always doing their best. And sometimes that's hard for us to digest that like surely that could not have been their best. They should have known better. They should have known that they were hurting my feelings. Surely radical forgiveness allows you to understand that people are doing their best. Radical forgiveness allows you to know that you too are doing or have done your best. Forgiveness is the act of raising one's consciousness to a level beyond the event, elevating and expanding the awareness allows you to rise above and to assume a new knowing. An example of that was when Jesus was on the cross and what did he say? He didn't say, you know, you're doing me wrong. He said, forgive them for they know not what they doing. Now that's radical forgiveness. That's expanding the consciousness. That's being able to accept a person for who they are and where they are and to understand that they are doing their best. Now that really takes being able to focus, being able to go within, being able to release, being able to let go, to accept people where they are and to understand that they're doing their best, to understand that you're doing your best, to understand that I'm doing my best and I have always done my best. And even though intellectually, I might say, you know what, I, I should go right. But if emotionally and spiritually I go left, that was my best. See, sometimes it's hard because we always want to think because we've always been driven. We've always said, you can do more, you can give more, you can be more. But whatever it is that you are being and doing, it is your best at that particular time. So forgiveness is raising one's consciousness, becoming more aware, going beyond and understanding that I can't give what I don't have. People cannot give you what they have not given themselves. And so when people show up and show you who they are, it's up to you to take the information. You know, I can remember being in situations where I saw how people were treating other people. But what do we do? We always think that we're the exception to the rule. Okay, yeah, I know. I saw I saw how they did Reverend Patty. I saw what they did. But you know, that's you know, not me. And when they show up and do the same thing to you, you have the audacity to get mad. I cannot believe they did that to me. Well, why can't you believe 
benefit. Didn't you see how they treated other people? You had an example. John, they gave you an example. They showed you. But because of our inability, because somehow we think we're the exception, that we get angry. Who radical forgiveness is it, that spiritual consciousness. It is enlightenment. Who? What? What's not forgiveness is when it's out of a sense of obligation, because then it is inauthentic. Because. Forgiveness is a choice. Forgiveness is free will. And so when it's out of an obligation, when you feel like, well, I don't really want to forgive, but I feel like I have to forgive. Let me tell you today, you have not forgiven. And the moment that person does something that you don't like, you go right back. You go right back. Ooh. We do not, we do it because we think of forgiveness as the right thing to do, even spiritual thing to do, we think we ought to forgive. When we become self-righteous, well, you know, I don't really want to forgive, but, you know, I, I want to be right. This is just the right thing to do. That is not forgiveness. That's forgiveness out of self, a sense of righteousness. Because, you know, sometimes we become so self-righteous. You know, I got it together. You know, I'm the spiritual one. I'm deep. And so we feel like, well, you know, you know, out of that sense of righteousness, I need to forgive. And then you forgive because you think you're right and because you pity. You make a judgment call. That's not forgiveness. And then some of us do this pretending to forgive. Is that... We forgive out of opportunity. And when you forgive out of the opportunity and pretend, that is being in denial. That's not accepting that it is what it is. In childhood, we had no right to express our emotions. Spiritual maturity allows us to express ourselves. See, as you even evolve as you grow spiritually it allows you to express yourself to feel what you need to feel not to pretend that it's okay when it's not okay not to pass up the opportunity to look at it to sit with it to to, to discover the gift of forgiveness is to realize why is this impacting me the way that it is where am i you know you hear me say this all the time I don't care, meditate, I don't care, pray, do all that. Listen, I got my candles right here to burn candles. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I can do all of that. And let me tell you, life is still going to show up. But I get the opportunity to just see where I'm at, not to judge myself. Not to call myself bad, not to say, oh, I should have forgiven them. Oh, I should have did it faster. But no, just to see, Ooh, wait a minute, that really impacted me. And even though I had the information, even though I knew that they were capable of doing things like that, and even though I saw the doing to other people, how and why did I let that impact me? Oh, I need to, I need to examine that because that's an area that I need to grow in. That's some things that maybe have been hidden that I didn't realize that was still driving my life. And so now I need this opportunity to look at, maybe I'm still holding on to that pain that was given to me when I was a child and I wasn't able to release it and let it go. And now it's showing up again. That's the opportunity you get. And why do you want that opportunity? Because you want your life back. Because you want joy and peace. You want to enjoy it. Listen, as a Black woman in America, I got to forgive all the time. 
You know what I'm talking about. If I want to have some sense of life, if I want to have some sense of joy, if I want to be able to enjoy the fruits of my labor, if I want to enjoy my children, if I want to enjoy the things around me, I have to forgive all the time because I refuse to allow it to take my joy. You learn to accept the apology that you never received. You learn to accept the apology that's not there because you don't need the apology because you understand the level of your life and that your life belongs to you. And it's your birthright to have joy. It is your birthright to have peace, to have passion in your life. Forgiveness is the act of growth and maturity. It fosters growth and maturity. As we forgive, we grow and we grow and it becomes easier for us to forgive. Doesn't mean they didn't, that they, they did not do you wrong. But what it means is that I'm not gonna allow the effect, the impact on my life of what they've done. I'm not gonna give my power away. I'm not gonna enjoy my life that the universe gave me. I'm not going to not appreciate the color of my skin. I'm not going to not appreciate my gender, that I am a woman or that I am a lesbian or however I identify just because they don't understand. Forgiveness requires the expansion of our consciousness. You have to live consciously. You can't live on automatic pilot. You've got to be aware. You got to use your, your, your intuition, your inside GPS that tells you, hmm, something, hmm, something doesn't feel right. Let me take, let me take notice what's going on here. You have to expand your consciousness. You got to go beyond what it is that you think that you know. You got to be open. The opposite of forgiveness is resentment. The opposite of forgiveness is resentment. And resentment becomes cancer in your life. And how it shows up is that you can have a relationship that could be a good relationship, a good partner, but because you have that resentment inside of you, you will sabotage. Hmm. Resentment. Ooh. Cancer eats you up alive. You become a zombie. Just going through life not appreciating, no passion, no, just existing and not living. And we're here to live. Resentment. And let me tell you, you attract who you are and not what you want. And so if I have resentment in my heart, if I have the inability to forgive in my heart, then guess what? That's what I draw into my energy. You want to see who you are? Look at who you hang out with. You want to see who you are? Look at your partner. Look, who, look what you've attracted in your life. I've had to do that. I've looked like, what, what the hell was I thinking? Because when you're in pain, you, you attract pain. If I want to be painful, I have to create a reality that allows me to stay a victim. Because if I don't forgive, I'm a victim. Woe is me. I can't believe they did that to me. I can't believe, but you see that they're broken. You see that they can't even get themselves together, but you want them to treat you better than they treat themselves. Whether it's your mother, whether it's your father, what, it doesn't matter. If they are not treating themselves kindly, if they're not really 
creating a reality for themselves that is joyful, how the hell do you expect them to give you what they can't even give themselves? Resentment. Forgiveness occurs when there's a sense of power and control loss through the incident and you reclaim it. Reclaim your power. You are not powerless. You are very powerful. And I tell you this, wherever you are in your life is where you have chosen to be. But we're not stuck, Patty. We're not stuck with each and every breath that we breathe, with each and every morning, with each and every time we open our eyes, we get a new opportunity to create a new reality for ourselves. You know what keeps us from forgiving? It's because we're scared of our own power. What keeps us from forgiving? It's because we wanna play the blame game and we don't wanna be accountable and responsible for the choices that we're making. What keeps us from forgiving? It's because we're passionless. Because we, want, we don't wanna look at the choices that we've made. Clearly, if somebody has hurt me and I know how bad that felt, surely I haven't hurt anybody but we have, and you have, because we're human, but we have tools to be able to take our lives back. The benefit of forgiveness, better health, less stress, stop worrying about other people, what they do and what they didn't do, you're a full-time job. You are, you are, listen, I ain't got time. I am a full-time job of keeping myself together. You see how cute I am? This took a moment to get together. You're a full-time job. And so if this is the outer, the inner, to keep my mind balanced, to keep my mind open, to evolve, to accept, to let go. See, life is about making a call. Like every day you get an opportunity to make a call. All you look, does this work for me? Oh, well, it worked last year, but it no longer serves me. I gotta let that go. I gotta be open, I gotta evolve. I gotta touch my consciousness. Oh, wait a minute, I'm going into the, I don't know. Oh my goodness. I'm so afraid. I, what is this fear coming from? Because I say I want to live. You are a full-time job. You ain't easy. And you know that. When you being honest with yourself, you, honey, you, don't try to find, don't try to find nobody just like you to be a partner with, child. You know what you bring to the table. You know all your stuff. If we had x-ray vision, some of us have a cute little, you know, maybe a cute little Louis Vuitton bag of oppression. And, but some of y'all are sitting on chunks of stuff. You know, you haven't forgiven your mama and you damn near 100 years old. You still hold it on to what she did. You haven't forgiven your dad. Listen, people can only do what they do. They did their best. And their best could have been just bringing you here. Our parents are our mode of transportation. And so whatever they did in order for you to get here, job well done. The rest is left up to you. Let them go. Let them live their lives. Stop holding them. Because when you're holding them, you're holding yourself. The benefits of forgiveness is better health, less stress, less headaches. <sighs> to forgive is to 
take your power back. To error is human, to forgive is divine. The gift of forgiveness, it's a choice. Everything is based off of free will. To forgive or not to forgive, that's the question. It is a gift that must be given to yourself in order to be able to give others. I must first understand that I too have done my best. Forgiveness is acceptance. To accept apologies that is never given. Because not to is to exist and not to live. When you want to feel passion in your life, when you want to do something, when you want to be something, forgiveness is one of the keys that unlocks the door so that you can see the authentically who you are. Because without forgiveness, it shapes you to be not authentically who you are. Mm. Forgiveness is important to the healing process since it allows us to let go of anger. Some of us are so angry. We're just angry at life. Shame, taking away the judgment. There's nothing to be ashamed of. You've always done your best. And sadness, depression. Hmm. We think that if we forgive ourselves, that we will not be punishing ourselves because somehow we've gotten the idea that we need to punish ourselves because we were given a God that was a God of punishment. And if we didn't do this and we didn't do that and God wasn't, and we wasn't pleasing in the eyesight of God, then we had to be punished. And so what we've done is taken that up and we punish ourselves daily sometimes. We punish, we're so quick to punish ourselves and not accept that we've done our best. Forgiveness is taking out the shoulds and the shouldn'ts. Forgiveness is saying, not saying that I should have known better, but accepting that that was my best. Not to forgive will hold you hostage to the memory of the pain. You might not even be in pain anymore, but the memory of the pain is so deep within you until you replay it over and over again. Forgiveness allows you to release and let go of that pain. Forgiveness does not mean excuses or excusing a hurt, but it allows you to set boundaries for yourself. Set bound. See, once you forgive, then you begin to set boundaries for yourself. Understanding forgiveness is to move on from the injustice that you went through, whether or not it was inflicted by others or self inflicted. Forgiveness is the key to your power, your ability to authentically move through life, your ability to authentically accept yourself and your ability to be able to give that to others. That's the gift. That's the gift of forgiveness. God bless you. Thank you.